Okay, we left off with example two, and we were gonna try part A. So for part A, when x equals negative one, y equals zero. So this will become zero, and the x's here will become negative ones. And so that's what we have here in this line. Although when we square negative one, and when we raise negative one to the power four, we end up with positive one here and positive one here. Therefore, our next line will be c1 times one plus c2 times one plus three. Now, we can minus three on both sides so that the constant is on the left-hand side, and what we end up with on the right-hand side is just c1 plus c2, okay? Now, for the second condition, this means when x is positive one, y is four. So we plug in four for y, and we plug in one for the x's here and here, and we end up with this expression. One squared and one raised to the fourth power are both positive one, and so I get positive one coefficients. If I do the same and I minus three over to both sides, um, then I end up with a constant um, a constant here, one equal to C1 plus C2. Now whether you attempt to solve it with substitution or you attempt to solve it using the elimination method, you will still get the same result. So here I multiplied every term by a negative one so that I could end up with a fraction that I might be able to cancel my C1s. But what I end up with is negative one equal to negative C1 and negative C2. So what ends up happening is I end up getting negative four and I end up getting nothing on the right hand side or zero. But negative four does not equal zero which means there is no solution to this system, okay? Which means there's no particular solution for this DE, okay, with these boundary values. Now we can try part B and see if those boundary values will give us anything. Um, so let's take a look at that. Now I am gonna use this here because this does have my function and my boundary values. So now when x is equal to zero, my y value should be one. So when I plug in zero for x, I should get one for y. Well, that means this term's gonna go to zero and this term's gonna go to zero, which means I end up with the a statement one equals three, but one does not equal three, which means I have the same situation as before, no solution. Therefore, there's no particular solution to our DE. Here I plugged in the second condition, but it really was irrelevant, the second condition, because the first condition gave us the fact that there was no solution. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to part C. So for part C, when x is zero, y is equal to three. So I've plugged in zero for x, and I plugged in three for y. But however, this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, which means I end up with the statement three equals to three. That means there's an infinite number of solutions. However, these infinite number of solutions um, do need to satisfy a certain relationship. So we have to figure out how is C1 related to C2 or vice versa, okay? And both are acceptable. So whether you figure out how C1 is related to C2, or you figure out how C2 is related to C1, you still have that relationship, and that's what's needed to give the answer. So we use our second statement, that when x is one, y will equal zero. So y is zero, and I plugged in one for the x's, which means I end up with this equation, zero equals C1 plus C2 plus three. Now I can solve for whichever variable I want to, however, I chose to try to solve for C1. So I minus C1 on both sides of the equation and ended up with negative C1 equal to C2 plus three. And then I divided everybody by a negative one so that I ended up with positive C1 equal to negative C2 minus three. And that's the relationship that I have. I have related C1 in terms of C2. So when I go to write my function, I can write negative C2 minus three for C1 x squared 
c1 x squared plus c2 stay c2 x to the fourth plus 3 x to the fourth plus 3 where c2 can be any real number or I could solve this equation up here for c2 if I did I would end up with c2 equal to negative c1 minus 3 and then um, I would plug in negative c1 minus 3 for c2 and I would plug in c1 and then I would say that c1 is going to be any real number. Either of these two items are correct. Now for section 3.1.1 we have the homework set um, 1, 2, and 13.